Hi, I'm Speranza Walsh, and this is Art and Heart at St. Augustine's Church, and uh, we're doing our session remotely uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are still in lockdown, and uh, we're still on the subject of uh, blooms, backwash, feathering, and stippling. And today, our subject is birds. So for this bird, um, this is a robin. So we are going to try and create our own version of a robin. And uh, as you can see in this one, this is all white here at the bottom, so it's actually on snow. But uh, we're going to try and change that and build, uh, create a robin that's actually on grass. So uh, let's start. The first thing we have, uh, we need to be our paper. And of course, our pencil. And I've made the rough sketch of my robin, but I'm not sure if you can see it. So I will begin from the start. So the first thing is to draw a relatively small circle. And I say relatively small because I want you to draw a relatively bigger circle. Well, it doesn't look like a perfect circle, but that's okay. It's just for a guideline. And then a triangle. And then here, a tiny rectangle. And then on the small circle, we also have a small triangle. And then a small circle for the eye. And then we can now start sketching it. So what the, these are our markers. So first thing is to connect uh, the two circles. Okay, so this we connect here. I think that's a bit too narrow. I mean the curve. I, I want to have some more curve. Like that. And then um, I think um, I think the beak is a bit too long, but we shall see if we need to adjust it later on. Now for the body, okay, so from here, we follow this. Yeah, we follow the triangle. And then there's the tail. And then for the lower part of the body, we connect this tail. Okay, to the body. And then extend this here. So, Robins are basically round, it's a round bird. And then we draw the legs. And then here, just like that, we don't draw the feet of the robin. And that is because this will be covered with grass. So now I just have to um, remove the lines that we actually don't need. So that means removing the guidelines to leave us with the actual sketch that we will be using for our painting. Well, we will do our best. I find this really exciting. I don't think I'm happy with the beak. So let me just erase it and do the beak again. I think that's much better. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do a gray background here below. And why am I doing that? That is because this part of the bird is supposed to be white. And in watercolor, you don't uh, paint the white paper with white. You just leave it as it is and you just paint around it. So I will um, paint uh, the lower part with water, just water. Or maybe half of it, like that. Yes, and um, I'm going to paint this side as well. So all of this I will paint with water. Okay. 
So there we go. Very nice. Now, the next thing is I'm going to dilute some black paint and paint here, right below the bird. There we go. You get some more paint. Okay, let me just clean my brush and spread the paint. So we're just letting it spread so that it looks even and softer. So we're applying feathering. And we are going to do that on this side as well. Okay, and we're, I think we're doing a good job. Okay, so we apply feathering. And then uh, in this area, the color should be as close to each other as possible. So it looks more like a shadow of the bird. Okay, so we've done that bit and honestly we've done a very good job. Very good job. The next uh, part would be to paint part of the bird uh, with lemon yellow. So the first thing I'm going to do again is just to paint around the eyes, just with water, and then approaching the beak, and then here, some sort of a rectangular shape, but just water, and then here on the side, along uh, the sketch. And then I'm going to get some yellow ochre, and then I'm going to repeat that pattern by painting yellow around the eyes. And then here, just painting uh, this with yellow ochre. Okay, in this case, I will soften the edges with water. Okay. I really should have painted within the water, but since um, I got too excited. Okay, so it went a little bit over. Now we're getting some orange paint, which we are going to drop into this yellow ochre. So I need to go around uh, the eye, well not all around it, uh, also near the beak. And then going down, and there we go. Okay, as you can see, some have too much, uh, some areas have too much uh, orange paint, so I'm just going to lift it to make it look more even. There we go. And then I'm going to lift some from here as well. And from here. Let me just look at the picture. Oh, okay. So we'll put some over here just for balance. But we do have to soften the edges so that the transition looks very small. Okay, well done us. Now, the next stage would be 
to add the um, some diluted yellow ochre in this part of the bird and that is going to be like an underpaint that would affect uh, the tone of uh, whatever we're going to paint on it and we're actually just going to paint gray over it but again that's the undertone it should have that yellowish undertone and that part has to remain white because that part of our bird is white and while we are waiting for that to dry we are going to paint the legs and we are going to paint the legs with burnt sienna okay and obviously i've uh, painted it with too much uh, watercolor and very dilute as well so i'm just going to lift some of that and then i'm gonna get some black paint and then i'm going to paint the edges and here as well and i'm just going to let the paint spread by itself okay so far so good now I am going to lift the excess paint as we do. Same here. Okay, so it's more of an undertone. And then, now this area is dry, we are ready to paint it with gray. And uh, we will begin with the head. Okay, with the head. Okay, because it's actually small strokes like that that we see around this um, bird. Okay. Okay, so we've done that bit. And then going down the back, then going down again to the tail. Okay, now we go back to the beak first. So I am going to extend the beak a little bit. So I start at the center and then extend it like that. How the actual beak is. And here on this side, okay, I will do that. I will leave some white area at the center. And then the eyes, very important, don't forget the eyes. Okay. And then now it's more of just brush strokes going down until we reach um, the wing. Now, as for the wing, okay, here, it's more of a long uh, strokes, so like that. Let me, just, let me just turn this around so that it can uh, face me, so I can see what I have to do. I see. Okay. Okay, 
So here, this one has to uh, go up a little bit here. Again, our intention is to see the brush strokes here in this area. And then for the tail, Yes, we should see those brush strokes as well. And then now the other feathers. So we're just uh, painting the feathers. Now we continue the lines here. Yes, these are tiny feathers. Also here. And over there. And now we try to soften those um, strokes that we have just did, we've just done. Um, okay, well done. And softening those strokes includes this area over here. Okay, I think we need to add a little bit more paint and there we go we have our bird but as i mentioned earlier it's not going to be the same as this one because we're going to put grass here on the ground and to do that, we, we have to uh, paint the ground with water first. There we go. And then paint it with some green paint. And then we will put some grass here. So we need some brush strokes going up. And then we're going to take some yellow ochre. It will give it some character. And then we brush it along and then we get some black paint here particularly in the foot area and then we paint lines going up and then in some other areas give it balance so now it's about balance and then we rinse our brush and then we spread this okay and then we just get some black paint. 
in this painted area black because our bird has to have a shadow. Just to give it balance. So now we have our robin. on the grass with the shadow. I hope you enjoyed this session. Thank you very much and looking forward to see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>